the fake real estate bubble in the Philippines. What I find is the Philippines is a very bizarre place because there's so much investment going on on subdivisions and other properties which have no rental market. Um, I know where Decker Homes, for example, do these cheap budget houses, which are cheap to us but expensive to the, the locals. They rent for about 6,000 pesos. The mortgage is 8,000. Um, and the building quality is not very good. And if you bought one for with an 8,000 mortgage, you're still going to have to put a real kitchen in and stuff like that. So getting your money back um, is probably going to take you 10, 15 years. Um, they're not great, but then if you go a bit more up market, you've got houses that nobody can afford to rent. Um, I don't understand the logic. Well, from a real estate point of view, they guarantee they'll rent it out, but obviously once it's all been built, done and dusted, the real estate agents disappear onto the next project and you're left with a property with nobody to rent it out because nobody will pay that amount for rent. Um, and where there's value in it um, is if you're renting. You can rent some really nice places in the, in the Philippines. And it's quite funny uh, because you'll get somebody who refuses to drop the price on the rent. You can have, um, there, was, there was somebody who was talking about it on their floor because they live in a condo development. They were the only person living on the floor out of 16 apartments one in 16 um, and the other apartments wouldn't drop the prices in the rent because they've been promised they would get uh, I think it was 50,000 pesos a month um, it's about what's that 800 pounds a month rent or whatever the uh, reality is nobody in that area can afford that they've got no hope and if they could they would just buy one um, the rental potential is pretty, pretty much zero um, but there's this constant drive in Philippine property, yet there's virtually no hope of filling it if you buy one. And this is why I want to make this very clear, because uh, it's the UK's booming bust again at the moment. Um, although the wages haven't gone up, the house housing market is buoyant purely because of the constant influx of migrants and what have you, and a growing population. So it's a it's a false market in some ways because the properties are actually overvalued, but it will retain being expensive simply because there's a demand for it. In the Philippines, it's a fake demand. In Minglanilia, there's at least five subdivisions that have prop, uh, cropped up in the last few years. There's no market for them. What it is is foreign money. It is. Um, Dave the engineer in uh, in uh, what do you call it Joan and Urs they they're working overseas they're sending money back they've told this is a great investment and buy this buy that and they're saying that's my retirement fund I'll rent this out there's no market there's nobody going to rent it not at what you paid for it it's just not worth it now I know some people will say well aren't you doing that in Spain the difference people come here on holiday I didn't go and buy a well, I look to buy a place inland in a subdivision which has no no tourism um, I know there's a lot of British expats live in some of these areas but a lot of them retire there so they're retiring a lot of them buy if the rent they're not going to be wanting to pay too much for rent anyway but I actually live next to the beach gonna buy next to the beach know that this has been a holiday place for the last 20 odd years it's not going to decline it's a market that's already established and will retain um, some population shrinkage will happen um, if we go to the next town you got shrinkage you can see nearly everything is empty there but we are actually right at the beach um, in an established area which was originally a village it wasn't one of these fake developments with no infrastructure etc this village was already here um, before the tourists so it's a different setup in the Philippines you'll have a subdivision that's built 
poorly. They haven't adjusted the road width. They haven't put extra drainage in. They haven't uh, built water infrastructure or anything else. They just tap it all onto the existing, which means you get more power cuts. You get um, heat build up because subdivisions build the houses too close which means when there is a power cut there's no air circulation your running costs of electric are higher because your cooling costs are higher because you've got this constant build up of concrete um, which you don't get in a property that isn't in a subdivision um, the other side of this being that if you wanted a property to buy and rent out uh, for the family long term, it is a way to do it. Because if you can't trust people with cash, putting it in an investment that is very difficult for them to get their hands on, um, you could actually have a ticking over income. You know, because if you bought a property for, say, 5 million pesos in a nice subdivision, you will get 10 to 20,000 a month rent on it and hopefully you get somebody to look after it but if you've got that ticks over you got somebody in there looks after you get your money every month no headaches but getting the return on investment it's not it's not going to be good um, because, I'll tell you why the return on investment is not good um, the market is not a real market See, most markets are built on sale and demand. Philippines market is false. Um, they want to sell new properties, not old ones. So they will tell you the house has gone up by quarter of a million in a year, yeah, quarter million pesos. Reality is, it hasn't. It's declined because it's already a second-hand house, um, which makes it harder to sell. So when you've got a second-hand house, um, you're actually going to be paying out less than you paid for it um, but the real estate agents say the reverse um, these are things to be aware of um, the same as if you're buying one buy a second hand one don't buy one off off plan go and see the guy down the road that's struggling to make these mortgage payments his will be a lot cheaper than the, the one off the real estate agent I'll tell you that now um, also you've got the issues with the real estate agent sticking whatever they feel like on it um, I've had it before where a house we looked at was if I remember right they're trying to sell it to us for two million or something um, my wife talked to the, the, the there's two agents she was talking to another agent it was 1.5 one of our friends is the treasurer for the local barangay captain and said they tried to sell it to a uh, mariner for 800,000 <laughs> so that's how rogue they are um, and that's how to treat them treat them as thieves because most of them are um, and I say most because that's the opinion you've got to take um, they may not all be thieves um, but it's like an honest real estate agent is about as honest as a uh, second-hand car salesman. <laughs> so just be aware. Um, so if you're going to buy property, I recommend not buying new. But I also recommend if you bought somewhere um, with a bit of land and built it yourself, you're probably going to do it cheaper. But know your builders because there's some right cowboys out there. Horrendous. Anyway, thanks for watching.